Welcome to Hope United Methodist Church. Our worship service for today, January 9th, 2022. And our service today is entirely online due to the inclement weather and ice. But we hope that you find yourself blessed today. As we go through our service today, our connect, grow, and love pieces are shown here. As we go through the service, we encourage you to connect with God, your neighbor, and otherwise, uh, as far as scripture goes. Have you ever felt lost in your attempts to understand something of God? If you have reached an understanding, how did you do it? Be willing to share that with someone you know. For growing today, it is okay to feel uncertain in our journey with God. We do not always understand why God is leading us in a particular way until we come to the end of that part of life's journey. Ask the questions. Struggle with understanding. Be open to learning about what God is molding you into. And as we learn to love more unconditionally, remember this. Don't squelch the hard questions people ask about God or pose to God. It is in our struggles and our ease of life that we learn. Questioning what is happening and why are all part of growing, not just when we are children, but even when we are mature adults. Questioning and seeking answers helps us grow and learn. As we continue to time of worship, I am grateful that you are joining me. As we continue, we are supported with these words from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. God established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling God's command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God's name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. As we continue to give glory to God, let's keep our voices and hearts united as we pray this morning. Send, O God, into the darkness of this troubled world the light of your Son. Let the star of your hope touch the minds of all people with the bright beams of mercy and truth. And so direct our steps, that we may ever walk in the way revealed to us. As the shepherds of Bethlehem walked with joy to the manger where he dwelled, who now and ever reigns in our hearts, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us continue to praise God as we pray 
in the means and the way in which Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Primary scripture for today's time together um, with God comes from Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 41 and following. Every year, Jesus' parents traveled to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up as they always did for the feast. When it was over, and they left for home. The child Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents didn't know it. Thinking that he was somewhere in the company of pilgrims, they journeyed for a whole day and then began looking for him among neighbors and relatives. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. The next day they found him in the temple, seated among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. The teachers were all quite taken with him, impressed with the sharpness of his answers, but his parents were not impressed. They were upset and hurt. His mother said, Young man, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been half out of our minds looking for you. Jesus said, Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I had to be here dealing with the things of my father? but they had no idea what he was talking about. So he went back to Nazareth with them and lived obediently with them. His mother held these things dearly deep within herself, and Jesus matured, growing up in both body and spirit, blessed by both God and people. As we come into the time where we expand on this piece of scripture, we also want to give thanks to God for many of the things that God has blessed us with. These last couple of years have been very difficult dealing with COVID. We have watched political uh, tensions continue to rise, not just in our own country, but across the world. Wars have been breaking out. We have seen people struggle with lack of resources, things that are not in the abundance that we would have anticipated or expected. We've watched people lose their jobs. We've watched others take on jobs that they had been ill-equipped for. In the midst of all of this, we have watched people struggle with what it means to love your neighbor as well as take care of yourself. So as we enter into this time of prayer, and we enter into this time of thanksgiving and intercession, I want us to remember how God has called the church to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Loving, holding, healing, feeding, taking care of the sick, the elderly, the widowed, the orphaned. If God has laid it upon your heart to help Hope United Methodist Church in their service to God and the greater community, I encourage you to send your offering to Hope United Methodist Church. The address is shown right here. Or if you prefer, you are invited to go to our website, which is also shown right there on the slide, and you can give online. For those of you who prefer to make sure that uh, your offering is uh, delivered to the church uh, personally, you are welcome to bring your offering to the church and slide it under the church office door. Let's come into this time for prayer. Gracious God, please heal us. 
not just as an individual, but as families, as communities, as a nation, as a world. Everyone is tired. There is so much anger and frustration and fear. Things are changing, God, faster than some of us are prepared for, not fast enough for others. We're uncertain of what the future holds. God, help us lean into our understanding that you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That your love never fails. That in the midst of rising tensions, you are still there for your people. So we pray for healing upon those who are sick. We pray for stamina for those who are taking care of the sick. We pray for patience for teachers and staff and children as they struggle to learn in atmospheres that can be frightening and frustrating. We pray, O oh God, for those who are hungry, for our food distribution across this world was lopsided to begin with and has become even more strained. We pray for those areas that are filled with violence and war. We pray, O oh God, for the creating of plowshares instead of weapons of destruction. We pray for wisdom, for a nation of leaders, for nations of leaders, to do that which is best for all of humanity and not just for a select few. We celebrate, O oh God, that in the midst of all that we have experienced, you are still there and showing us love, and we see beauty around us. We see the rising sun and the setting sun. We watch as snowflakes, each individual and miraculously created, fall from the sky. We see light reflect from surfaces covered in ice. We see the palm branches blow and we feel the warmth from the sun. Regardless of where we may find ourselves, God, you have created for us an amazing, amazing place to live. We find our spirits lifted with joy as we hear children laugh. We find our hearts moved with those who grieve. We are brought to tears at the joy of watching a wedding, the birth of a child, the celebration of an anniversary, and the holding the hand of one we love. Almighty God, may we continue to reflect your character into the world your character of love and care and compassion. Amen. Our time together continues with our morning message. And our message today is logical thoughts of children. This particular passage is one that fascinates me, especially since having become a parent, because as I read this passage, I can feel a rising sense of fear and um, uncertainty throughout this entire passage, where we see Mary and Joseph preparing to go back home and they pack. And let's face it, folks, when we get ready to pack and we're ready to get ready to, to go somewhere, there is a frenzied amount of activity around us. Let's be honest about it. Uh, my family likes to go camping, and, and my wife often will make the comment of, there is just too much to do. Because we are running in in the house, out of the house. We pack the bags. We go to the car. We throw it in the car. And then we're like, oh, did you remember to pack? And then you run. 
the house and you grab the next thing and you take it out and they're like, now don't forget this for the dog. And you go back to the house and back out. And each trip, one for the kids and one for you and one for the spouse and one for the animals, and then for the food. And then somehow you get halfway to where you're going and one of you will pose the question, did you fill in the blank? And there's that sense of doom fear and anxiety that rests and falls upon you. I can only imagine if you had forgotten a child. But they begin their journey and they, they go at least a day's journey into this and they begin looking for their son, Jesus, and he's nowhere to be found. And so you go to your cousins and you go to your brothers and sisters-in-law and your mothers and fathers-in-law and, and all of the aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews and everything else. You're going to everyone. You go to the neighbor and the butcher and everything, anyone else you can think of going, have you seen? And with each, I haven't, your stomach gets tighter and tighter Tighter and your, your heart beats harder and harder and your frantic movements become more and more evident. And let's be honest, when things like that happen in us, our tempers begin to fray. When I find that child, oh boy! When it becomes obvious that Jesus is not with them at all, they go back to Jerusalem. And they continue to look. Is he where we stayed? Is he staying with someone we know in Jerusalem? They continue to journey until they find him in the temple. And while there's that sense of relief as we read this, oh, thank goodness, they have found Jesus. They have found the Son of God. He hasn't been lost. He hasn't been destroyed. Nobody has run away with him. He's not been kidnapped. He's not been sold into slavery. All the things, all the horrible things that we could possibly imagine happening haven't happened. He's in the temple. And they can hear him speaking with the temple teachers, scribes, and leaders, and these folks are amazed with his answers. He is sitting among them. Now, folks, there's a couple of things that are going on there. Uh, the teachers at the time would often sit to teach, but it was not uncommon for students to also sit. And so they're all sitting, and, and questions are apparently being posed back and forth, and, and Jesus is giving answers, and they're amazed at the sharpness of his answers. Yet, Joseph and Mary are not impressed with his answers. They are instead hurt. They're upset. They have just spent two days trying to find Jesus, trying to figure out where he went. And now they are relieved at seeing him, but what he is talking about isn't something that gives them a sense of peace. I mean, Mary and Joseph have both already been told that Jesus is the Son of God. They've been told this in dreams. They have been told this uh, from the shepherds. They've been told this and told this. This is the Son of God. But what does that mean? And then as we continue to look at this, we're told at the beginning of this particular passage that Jesus is 12. Now, having been a parent, still am a parent, there is this age at which kids move from being this child that is relatively easy to work with. They are relatively compliant. Uh, they don't talk back a huge amount. And if they do, it's usually because they need a nap. Okay. It shifts. 
And they begin finding their own voice and they begin exploring their own identity and they begin to say, well, I'm not a kid anymore. And they have these moments where they act like a kid and they act like an adult. And that magical age seems to be right around 12. And if you look at this particular passage, Jesus is 12 years old. He's got some independence. He can take care of himself to a degree. Which is probably why he was expected to be one place when he wasn't. And so Mary and Joseph begin to have a conversation. I mean, up until this point, the entire passage has been a narrative. Somebody telling us what's going on. Now we get into speech. Now we hear actual voices being uh, used. And Mary is the first to speak. And you can hear it, can't you? Young man, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been out our minds looking for you. I mean, I can hear it. I mean, I am without a shadow of a doubt positive I've heard words similar to that come from my mother's mouth. And as soon as those words came out, I know my stomach sank. I knew that I was in for it because it wouldn't have been young man. It would have been my full name, Michael Scott Swimley. You know what I'm talking about. When your parent uses your full name, you know. In this passage, Mary is using the full influence of her motherly voice to show displeasure and fear and disappointment to Jesus. And here's where the logic of a child comes in, because let's be honest, we don't always get it. We didn't always get it when we were that age. Even when we heard our mother or father use our full name, sometimes we still didn't get it. Why? Because of the logic of children. While Jesus may be growing in wisdom, while Jesus may be growing in understanding, he is still a 12-year-old boy. And he says, why were you looking for me? Why? I know where I'm at. I knew where I was at. I wasn't lost. He did. He knew where he was. But mom and dad didn't. But then we hear a little bit more because this is also where we begin to realize that not only have Mary and Joseph been told who Jesus is, we begin to realize that even in this young time of Jesus' life, Jesus knows who he is. Logical thoughts of children. Because if we also know who we are, we can also be confused when others don't understand why we are or do the things that we do. Jesus is the Son of God. Where else would he be but in the house of his Father, God? It makes sense. Didn't you know that I had to be here? Now, look at this. In this particular passage, didn't you know I had to be here, required to be here, required to be about the things of God? We too are called children of God. We too are to be about the things of God. Logical thoughts. If we are a follower of Jesus, we will do the things that Jesus did. And if Jesus was about the things of God, then we who follow Jesus are to be about the things of God. Logical thought of children. Too often we complicate who we are and what we're called to do. We complicate the message of God. We complicate it because 
wanting to feel power, wanting to have a sense where we are needed and, and therefore if we only have the answer, you, you can't get rid of me. I don't know, but we do. We complicate it. We complicate it as pastors. We complicate it as, as parishioners. We complicate it as missionaries. We complicate it when the truth of the matter is, if we are truly followers of Jesus, the Son of God, then we will be about the things that the Son of God was about. And Jesus very plainly, even at the age of 12, said, I am about my Father's business. And God's continual work is about a redemptive path of recreating, reestablishing, forming a relationship with God. And Mary and Joseph had no idea what he was talking about. Sometimes neither do we. Sometimes we have no idea what Jesus is talking about. Instead, we begin to create something else. Jesus's answers to the questions were sharp answers. And that word could be interpreted in a number of ways. It could be direct and to the point. It could be so formed that it was it was, had an edge to it. You know how kids answer some questions. There's no doubt in their mind there's an edginess to it. But it also can mean complete. It's fully formed. And it's well done. Now that was a sharp answer insightful, thought out, articulated. We as followers of Jesus aren't called to have all the answers, but we are called to be able and willing to share what we do know and do so in a meaningful way. Jesus, if we look at his ministry, was continually spent teaching others in ways that they could then understand about God. He used stories. He used illustrations. He used example. And then he also reminded us that we are called to heal, and so he healed. We are called to make relationships with those that God desires to have a relationship with, even when the rest of the world doesn't. So he spent time with prostitutes, drunkards, people who ate too much, tax collectors, thieves, fishermen, shepherds. He didn't go running after power, prestige, or wealth. What he went after was a relationship with people to help them understand who God is, how much God loves. And we find that even at the age of 12. So we went back to Nazareth with his mother and father, Mary and Joseph, and lived obediently. In other words, he was obedient. He honored his mother and father as prescribed by the law. He doesn't begin his official ministry until the age of 30. He walked what needed to be walked. He didn't try and skip steps. He didn't try and make it easier. He didn't try and grow up faster than he was supposed to. But throughout this time, he continued to grow in maturity, in body, in spirit, in wisdom. Throughout Jesus' life, he never stopped continually looking for ways to 
be with God the Father and show others how to be with God the Father. He forced no one. But he did encourage. And when they said no, he let them go. The logic is there of a child, a kind of black and white. I invite you to have a relationship with God. But if you don't, and you're not ready yet, I'm going to keep teaching, but it's okay. You're loved anyway. Amen? Amen. Before we leave, I want to make sure that each of you is aware of several things that are happening here at the church. Our Upward Basketball program begins this week. We ask that each and every one of you pray for the program. We ask that you pray for all of the coaches, as well as praying for each and every one of the children that is participating in this program. It is a vital ministry where we are able to show the love of Jesus, while also giving some um, skills for kids to learn about basketball, and even more so, how to create and form friendships and relationships, and how to work with one another. Also, on Thursday, January 13th, we have our free community dinner here at the Fellowship Hall at Hope United Methodist Church here in Port Treverton. Uh, you can see what the menu is right there on the slide. Uh, we also will have it available for persons to come and take home with them uh, if they do not want to be out and about with other folks. We understand that and we encourage you to do that which makes you feel comfortable and safe. We also uh, would like to make sure that the, it's well shared and known that the wreath that has been hanging at the front window of our church along the street has been placed in memory of uh, Hazel, Harold, and Tina Reichenbach by their family. And finally, we have had numerous questions recently about what the office hours are for the secretary, and those are there as well as the contact phone number and email should you need to get a hold of the church office. And so, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God make God's face to shine upon you and give you peace, especially the peace of a child. Until next time, take care.